Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. I'm Chris Dredd, my main man, JB. What's going on, big man? You all right? We are all good. It has been hot as hotter than hell here in the UK. Over Indeed. Weeks. And yeah, it's been it's been it's been rough. I mean, so rough that apparently the heat knocked out your whole internet. Yeah, it was the um, you know, them storms. Yeah. We had some mad storms and fucking Virgin Media punk ass bitches um took a week basically to get and sort out the box. We booked an engineer to come Tuesday and the internet magically came on on Monday when they were fiddling around with them green boxes in the street. So, oh, um, yeah. That is... One of them, but the guys come, me sort out my internet. It's a little bit quicker. It's a little bit faster. I'm not getting the glitchiness and all that with the video. I'm happy, man. We're happy. So this is the postponed episode 14 that you guys should have got um, a few days ago, but here we are. And as Jordan was saying, it's been fairly hot. I mean, it's summertime, it's August. Um, and uh, yeah, we're back with episode 14. So well, I think there's a, a bit of news as well, Jordan, things that have gone on since the last episode. Yeah, um, there's been one or two bits of news here and there. We'll give you some quick ones. Uh, I think it was before we even postponed our episode, we uh, we lost Kamala, James Harris, a uh, big star in, it felt like every promotion that he went to played a prominent role, including WWF, WCW, you know, he went to world class. I think he, he might have even done the AWA. But yeah, he's a big star and he'll he'll be missed. It's, uh, rest in rest in peace, Kamala. Yeah. I was um, I was I was chilling with my boy, and he's um, he runs a toy uh, emporium. Shout out Monkeys Emporium. And uh, as I was in there chatting with him, a guy came in, literally pointed at his wrestling figures and said, "I'll have that Kamala. I want that Kamala." Um, and obviously he was um buying it because of uh, of what has happened recently. Yeah. Um, the price of figures still. Go, is going through the roof. There's uh-huh. been a lot of who, there's been a lot of hoo ha recently. I'm on a lot of wrestling figure forums, and if you're in the UK and you're a wrestling figure collector, you will be aware of the current hoo ha going on with the WWE retro lines. Are you aware of this, Jord? Not What's clearly. been going on Not with the clear. entertainer. Basically, the entertainer. They, for whatever reason, they managed to get a massive, huge batch of um, the retro lines and they were knocking them out for six quid each. Now, these have been going online regularly, 40 and 50 quid. The price went through the roof. I think originally they were only 15 quid or something. Um, So they, they got them in and they were knocking them all out for six quid. And what was happening, all these people found out about it. The wrestling collectors were going, buying them all out and then knocking them out on eBay for like 40 and 50 quid. And there was like... Excuse me, people are I'm, pissed, man. In, I'm, I'm always know? a free enterprise, but like, don't don't mess with... You know, you're, you're messing with the fan base and that's not cool. So basically what ended up happening... Within one day, dude, I think one or two days, okay, the entertainer had clocked onto this, right? So they 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 managed, they probably had a, a loads in the warehouse that they realised that they'd had, or they'd managed to buy some from somewhere. So they'd put them all out in the shop, and they were going for six pounds each. So everyone was buying them up, people going crazy, to the point where they had to limit the sale, and they had to say, right, only two per customer. Uh, and then what happened was... They put the price up within a day to £12 and then to £15. So within oh. two days, it had gone from 6 to 15 You can You can only blame these smart Alex, you know, that are buying, are buying them up and trying to shift them on for 40, 50 quid. Yeah, that, um, I mean, that was what... Yeah, and my... Yeah, I mean, my missus went in today because I said to her, she was in a, a, a local entertainer, shall we say. Yes, there is one local. And, and so there, there's two. There's one in our town and there's one in a couple of towns up. And that's the one she was walking past. And she rang me. She goes, 
when we were in town the other day, did you want to go into the entertainer? And I said, oh, I just wanted to go in there and have a look if there was any wrestling figures. She goes, oh, do you want me to have a little pop in there? So I said, yeah, go on then. So she went in there, video called me, had a little look around. There was one retro in there and it was, they'd gone up to 15 quid now. And it was, who was it? I think it was, I think it was a rock maybe or a stone cold, right? So, uh, I said, no, fuck it. Forget about that. It, it, the, the card was all twisted and all that anyway. And I thought, no, bollocks. Yeah, don't need it. Then she goes, oh, Chris, you'll really like this one. Because she knows who I like. She knows. Da, da, Hang da. on. One, one second. Woo. Woo. So uh, she managed to pick me up at defining moments. Ric Flair Very good. for 10 of your English pounds. 10 of your English pounds. Oh, there you go, 10. Right. Um, so, the 10 of your English pounds. So, 10. yeah, that's been the hoo-ha in the wrestling world. Uh, one more piece uh, that's come out as from probably yesterday. Uh, well, for yesterday for us, whoever's listening at any point, whenever. Um, Renee Young has decided she's calling time on a WWE career and this is this is a loss for WWE because Renee Young has pretty much done everything there is to do in WWE on camera she even became you know part of the commentary team for a little while on Raw it was big stuff and she is she is leaving um I'm only hoping she doesn't go to AEW and this might annoy this might annoy AEW fans but I'm gonna do it I was um, going to add to that as well, dude, because yeah. the first thing that I fucking saw online was AEW fans saying, she's coming to AEW. Gosh, she's going to go. Dude, she doesn't want nothing to do with AEW, man. That would be like yeah, a fucking yeah, step back for her. Yes, she's married to the AEW champion, John Moxley, blah, blah, blah. But she is too good for AEW. She's too good. That, that's, that's all I have to say. She should be on a proper sports network, whether it's ESPN, you know, NBC, SM, DAZN, any of those decent sports networks, CBS, whatever. Like, they'll snap her up. Can do, yeah, she can easily do a host a sports talk show, anything like that, any like different sport. I don't think it matters, but she's, yeah, she's, she's gone past wrestling for sure. I think she's, I, I think she's done it partly for the schedule. Right, partly for the schedule, so she can have a bit more time off, spend a bit more time with her other half. Um, but I mean, she may show up once as a little teaser or something, or you might see her in the crowd at AEW or something. But like Jordan's saying, the chances are she's going to be snapped up by hopefully one of these mainstream networks and um, she'll do her thing uh, from there. Yeah, you know, these it, honestly, I get it, you know. Go week in, on. week out, I'm I'm getting a bit more pissed off with these AEW fucking fanboys, man. And like, you know, I, I, like I say, I hate to say oh, it, man. It's just, well. it's 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 fucking it. Ah, uh, like, ah, uh, like sometimes it hurts my brain. Do you think reading? Some, what, do you think that WWF and WCW fans were like this back in the nineties? No. No, because I, I think people that were w, WF fans and WCW fans used to watch both of them. And I don't think it was a case of, you know, oh, fuck, fuck them or fuck them. It was like, oh, shit, look what they're doing. Oh, shit, look at this, look at this. You know, it was more a case of there's a lot going on. Let's just take it all in. But I, I don't. I don't understand sometimes the mentality of some of the AEW fanboys and girls or neutral gender fans. Um, I, I sorry, I had to add that one in there. Oh, but, no, uh, it, you know, I, we've got we've got to be uh, we've got to be cool. Um, yeah, I don't get it, mate. I don't get how. Like, say, if you want to laugh, okay, go on Facebook. And, and join, add yourself into any AEW groups and see the kind of posts and the kind of responses that are on there. And honestly, it will make your fucking brain hurt sometimes. And don't get it twisted. We watch AEW. There's bits and bobs of it that we like. Obviously, there's bits and bobs of it that we don't like. You know, but... I will say this. No... I will say this. Far too much of it turns up on Botchamania at the minute. So, like, let's not say how wonderful it is. 
<laughs> you know, you know what I said to myself the other day, right? I've seen a lot of posts about the AEW figures, okay? And I've got a hot take, dude. We've not even started the podcast yet, no, and we're, 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 we're but, you know, but fuck it, we're doing, we're doing this. We rarely do this, but. I, I actually had a little brain fart to myself the other day when I saw about the AEW figures coming out. And I actually thought, you know what? I wasn't going to buy any of them because I'm not really that bothered. But the chances that AEW may one day fold um, is actually quite high. And if you buy all the figure lines and just keep hold of them, there might be worth a bit of money if AEW goes down the fucking proverbial shitter. There's probably, only so much. Probably why I bought those TNA figures all them years ago. Man, screw you! <laughs> God damn it, screw you! <laughs> and TNA still going, you some bitch. <laughs> Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It didn't work out. It didn't work out, but you know what? It's funny though because. Although none you know, of the guys, I, I, none of the guys I bought are still with the company, so maybe there's something. But it's all good, man. Like I say, I mean, it's all fun, it's all jokes, you know. But in, on a serious note, I mean, what are the chances that Tony Khan and his old man are going to pump as much money into AEW as what Dixie Carter has and her old man um, has pumped into TNA to keep it alive? What are the chances, really? I mean, they, they. I'll say this, they got a lot of money, they got a lot of investments in other things, what the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, Fulham FC. Fulham FC in the UK, yeah. Yep, yep. Fulham, Fulham are back in the Premier League, so there's more, more of that to come out from that, you know. Yeah. There's a lot, I mean, to, it, a lot to go on in, like, as regards to financials for, for the Khans, but... It, and Tony loves wrestling. Exactly. Tony loves wrestling. I think, Let's not get... I think Tony could be a new, a new Ted. Because Ted loved wrestling. Ted loved the NWA and he loved, you know, WCW. He just he threw whatever happened. he wanted at it. And I think Tony <laughs> probably will do the same. I mean, to be honest, I don't like to I won't like to see the downfall of AEW as well before people start no, getting no, on my nutsack no. about that. Yeah. You know, I I don't want I wanna see another place where people condition. can go. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, another hot take as well, man. I ain't a fan of Moxley, bruv. Didn't, didn't, you know what? He was he wasn't a great champion in WWE, and that might hurt a lot of people's feelings. You know, come Good. at come get me. Um, yeah, and yeah. This um, this Moxley thing in AEW, where is he stone cold? Is he not stone cold? What I don't know. Like, like I say, I I'm not a fan. I'm not good. I'm not bought into he's it. Good, but. He's good, but I'm not sold. No, um, you he, know, and like I, I say, think, I think MJF could probably take the title off him pretty soon. I, uh, but this is this is an yeah. But this is another thing that I'm seeing in the AEW groups, dude. I'm seeing a lot of people when uh, Moxley is mentioned, basically saying, uh, you know, when MJF is mentioned, sorry, saying, oh no, they can't take the title off Moxley. They can't take it off Mox. And uh, it's it's doing me in. Maybe we'll cut off the AEW chatter because it could go on all night. Um, but we yes, are, we are actually here because we watched the show. We reviewed the show, and um, we are. So we, that was the prelims. That was yeah, the that was, preliminaries. The preliminaries out of the way. That was, yeah, yeah. Um, we are traveling back in our time machine, all the way back to 1991. But before we talk about 1991 and what happened, we are going to remind everyone to like and subscribe and comment and everything else that comes in between, because. In the next couple of weeks, as long as we hit a, hit a certain number that we haven't quite figured out, I'm quite excited, it's going to be giveaway time. And I've got a little giveaway box already set up. There's a few bits in here already. There's a few more bits to go in. I don't know if you can see them because of the screen, but there's DVDs, there's a VHS tape. There's plenty of stuff. to. There's still there's DVDs in packaging still in there. Still Dude, in there. I same. I've got, I've, I've got DVDs sitting here for the giveaway box. We've got WCW cards. I've got rest. We've got stickers. We've got fucking the like stickers still in the this, packs. This is this is the hot take. There's there may or may not be one or two Hasbro's in there. Oh shit, son! So let's let's like, let's subscribe, let's comment, let's talk about it, let's keep it. Get going. us. 
get us up to that magical number of 1000 subscribers on YouTube. It's not that many, man. We're up to like, we're, 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 we're going in between like 440 and 460. It's going up and down, up and down, you know, so we need to get at least to a thousand because then we can start monetizing the channel. We can start doing a little bit more production wise. We can start pushing forward with the channel at the moment, myself and JB are carrying this on our, uh, backs right yeah. now. Well, uh, we're trying to. Just, there are DVDs as well. There's no sponsorships here. There's nothing. Nothing. This apart is from, our shit. Sorry, let me let me add in. There is no sponsorships apart from Tree of Life Framing. Tree of Life Framing, who have made another T-shirt of myself and oh, Jordan. Cool. I've got one on each titty right and there. They will, they will frame you like Kevin Sullivan. So by God, that means that's a pretty good frame up. <laughs> so. <a> <laughs> So you could catch us here on YouTube, um, YouTube uh, Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. We're on Twitter. JB's banging up the Twitter and the Instagram uh, Chat Grapple Pops on Twitter and Insta. Get them fingers ready, Jordan, because we are counting down all the podcast um, platforms that we are on. We are on Podbean, Spotify, Deezer, Castbox, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Listen Notes, iHeart Radio, TuneIn Radio, the whole ting a ling so get us on one of those platforms and fucking subscribe to us on youtube god damn it hit that button don't even need notifications it's free to subscribe hit the fucking bell and right. help just hit it. it it could pay off for one lucky subscriber because there's plenty of stuff to give away and it won't just be one giveaway because oh, we've got too much stuff to be banging in one box. We'll be doing a DVD this week, the, a, a figure that week, you know, some stickers and some cards the next oh, week. You know, we are going to be you know, classic stuff, like lots of classic shit to hand out. Like, so trust me. So what are we, what are we, what, what pay-per-view we, did we watch in our time machine this week, dude? We, 19th of May, yeah, 1991. Right. <clears throat> 1991 it is super brawl the very first super brawl it is live from st petersburg florida in front of a cracking crowd of six thousand, which i didn't think was that big but it looked okay and um just for and I'm, i can't I can't help myself this uh, this super brawl did a hundred fifty thousand buys for a show that wasn't very big you know or oh, wcw you know in the 90s not doing great it's still bigger than your AEW buys. Oh, shit, son. We're pissing them fanboys yeah. off tonight. Yeah. And as, you know, <laughs> as Billy Jack oh. Hayes would say, bombshell tonight. Yeah, we, we can't help ourselves tonight, can we? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, the tagline, Return to the Rising Sun, because they did the uh, Japan WCW Super Show, New Japan, sorry. Um, yep. Before, preceded by that yeah where tatsumi fujinami beat rick flair won the nwa world title but not the wcw title because flair went over the top broke it's really convoluted it was i mean it was, i know they call they have the dusty finish but that was oh god that was way more than any dusty finish i'd ever heard of but, <laughs> Yeah, so we this is how we've got here to our main do well, we get to a main event of Ric Flair and Tatsumi Fujinami in a rematch, which is our main event. But yeah, um we start this off, and this is fun. Brandy Brown, never heard of her, have you? Uh no, but may I just say before we get to Brandy Brown singing the national anthem, yeah. I watched it on the VHS. Uh, yes, uh now I will say this, I had to deliver this VHS to Chris. Because yeah. <laughs> of all the VHSs he has, he doesn't have Super Brawl 1. I know. So, it's a shame. And it's still got the two pounds off sticker of your next WCW <laughs> video purchase. But him, unfortunately, I the, 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 the offer closed on the 31st of January, 1993. Damn. So uh, I won't be able to cash that in. Cheers, um, Ted. Yeah, cheers, Ted. But... Um, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, go on, do it, do it, because Ted, Ted's annoyed you already. Do it. Because I, the fact is, bro, um, there's there's a lot cut off of this, and if I'm honest with you, this time I watched all of the cut out matches on the network. So I watched the VHS, <laughs> but I also watched the network to catch up with all the matches that were cut off. Because to be fair, there was some fucking good matches. 
that they cut off. They, they're really there was there was some good stuff that they cut off. Um, you know, so it's fucking. It, it is a bit annoying, and if, if I'm honest with you, dude, can I ask you if it wasn't for the network, where on earth would we been able to watch uh, Oz versus Tim Parker? I mean. Well, this is the problem. When some of these bigger matches get cut off the VHS tapes. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, they're, they're your money matches. And it's disappointing that Oz That's your money Parker, match. Which, you know, really showcased some of Oz's big talents. It was. And, and, and you know, it was a showcase. Even the intro, the, the entrance was yeah, incredible, yeah, you know. Yeah, but it was true. cut off of this thing. And the annoying thing is, on the yeah, beginning of the VHS... Uh, Shame on Ted for this. Shame on Ted. Because at the beginning of the VHS, they say, you've got JR oh, with the dream saying, yeah, we've got fucking 12 action-packed matches. No, you, no, you ain't. <laughs> Not on the VHS. Some bitches. So Turn anyway. Home video. Turn the home video, doing it again. Shame on We you. love the home videos, but no, WCW was notorious for cutting off a hell of a lot of their pay-per-views, yeah. and it really annoyed me. But... This week, I have watched those matches on the network, so we can talk about them. But, yeah, thank you, Jordan, for lending me this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even going to give it back or not, but, uh, yeah, it's one, <laughs> it's one of them ones. But it's great. This is a, a great VHS, and, uh, yeah, Jordan had it in his collection um, because we like to keep the watching the VHS and blah, blah, blah. And before Brandy Brown, on the VHS, we get, and I will say, it is probably my favourite pre-match um, advertisement on any video ever. On the VHSs, they like to have, like, you know, uh, adverts sometimes with the wrestlers or whatever, like advertising the video sets. And this one had Van Hammer and Johnny B. Bad in a hotel room in London in front of, like, Big Ben, right, fucking doing this advert. And I tell you what, it's on an, it's on a couple of my other VHSs as well. And it is by far one of the greatest things that you will ever see in your life. So please Google um, Facebook, uh, YouTube, sorry. Just type in Van Hammer, Johnny B. Bad, UK video release, WCW advert or whatever, yeah? Oh, just wow. check it out. It is fucking gold. I won't go into it. It is just, oh, it almost made me hard. Uh, it was that good. So... And it wasn't just Johnny B. Bad's makeup that did that. Uh, but, yeah, he's so pretty, he should have been born a girl. Right. <laughs> but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, he said it himself, dude. It's not me. Yeah, he did. Um, Brandy <laughs> Brown, um, someone I didn't know, um, sings America the Beautiful. And I was thought, I thought to myself, what, are we at WrestleMania? Like, did we miss something? That's a very, I thought that. That's a very WrestleMania move. Um, yep. For all our WCW fans, I apologise for bringing up, you know, a dreaded word like that. But do, do you think they were trying to do it to actually make this their WrestleMania? I don't think so. I think Starcade was always their big one. But it's been yeah. argued also by um, Bischoff that uh, Halloween Havoc they were actually was actually their like big one for oh, the year. Really? No. Yeah. Starcade was always the one, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people would argue on that one. But yeah, no, Halloween Havoc was special in a way, but I don't think... It was great. Yeah. Uh, Jim Ross and Dusty Rhodes. Dusty is fresh off uh, a stint in the World Wrestling Federation in nineteen. He gets the pops. He gets the fucking pops, man. Yeah. He, I've got written on my notes, pops for Dusty, baby, for yeah. the, the American dream. Uh, we, uh, straight away, I've noticed the wonky entrance sign. It's uh, definitely uh, like that, and uh, it makes me laugh like every time I see it. And we kick off with a vac. It's the vacant U.S. tag team title. I mean, this is. I mean, that's crazy enough. And we are heading to Bad Street, USA. Yes, we are, baby. We are heading to Bad Street, USA. Possibly the greatest theme song in wrestling, unless you have a different one for me. It, I mean, it's a it's a damn good one, man. It's a, and, and you hear the Bad Street chants. Bad Street, exactly. Bad Street. Because you hear it. These two guys, if you can see, I'll get them a little closer. You've got, you know, Michael PSAs, Jimmy Jam Garvin, Galoob Special, 
you know, and, you know, watch out for them because they are they are expensive now, aren't they? Um, they are. I mean, I love those figures as well. I love the Galoob um, uh, Freebirds. Love them. It's uh, it's the Freebirds with Diamond Dallas Page. Good God. Good God. And, and it's, uh, it, Big Daddy Dink, which is Oliver Humperdinck from the WWF or whatever. Yep. And yep. I've got Random Lady because I don't know who it is. Uh, I, I remembered her name, but I, I've fucking forgotten it. Um, but yes. And um, they are facing the WCW. I mean, this is, if I'm honest with you, someone's ripped the young pistols off and made the smoking guns. And I'm not joking. Well, I don't know. Weren't the young pistols the Southern boys before as well? Uh, yeah, but um, I mean, yeah, in this iteration of that. Smothers and Steve Armstrong, um, they are the smoking guns, dude. They've got the cross pistols on their backs. Yeah. Um, you know, they, the way they come down with the... With, you know, they are fucking... It's the smoking guns, dude. The mullets. Yeah, dude. It's the smoking yeah. guns. They've been ripped off. That was gimmick infringement, bro. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, they're taking on the young pistols and it's Steve Armstrong and Tracy Smothers, but I, I've cut it off because I've cut the... I've, the first thing I've got here is damn Hayes is Hayes had it all. He's incredible. So charismatic. I mean, if he was if he was around now, he'd be champion anywhere. You know, come at me with any of your, you know, retorts on that. The WWE, you know, AEW, you know, even New Japan, any one of your fans, because this guy has this guy had everything. I think so I think W I think WWF cut his dick off by calling him um, Doc Hendricks, man. Well, he he obviously retired. He'd obviously jumped out of the ring by then. Um, but yeah, he. I mean, could, he could have been Michael Hayes behind the mic. He could have been. Everyone knew who he was. You know, Doc. He could have been. I don't. It, it, but it's another one of these things where WWF had to own the name. Yeah, they true. couldn't, they, they didn't want him coming in and being bigger than WWF by being, um, you know, free bird, Michael Hayes, you know? So they had to just cut his dick off. Doc Hendricks start afresh, you know, but uh, he I, had it all dude. Yeah. Great. I, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of this match because it, it was messy. Mainly the, the production in particular was all over the place. And we've had this problem many times with WCW where they're missing clotheslines, they're missing big moves. And uh, Brad Armstrong makes his way to ringside to... Uh, Is it Brett or Brad? Brad, I think. Oh, I thought it was Brett. Um, <laughs> but yeah, his mullet, his mullet is strong, dude. The, the mullet, mullet is strong. strong. It's always strong in 91. Um, big Daddy Dink... Uh, gets kicked from ringside. Production misses the top rope move from the pistols. That's what it was. Um, and I'm like, guys, what are you doing? You, you keep doing this to us. You keep like missing bits. Like, you know, if it if it wasn't Sting in one of those cage in the Chamber of Horrors, it was everything in World War Three. Like, just fix your production. I can't remember who was in charge of production there. But they needed swift kicking. Like, well, put. Paulie dangerously mentioned something about that later when it comes to the sound. He's talking about some idiot from Florida can't even get the goddamn mic straight. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got big chance of bad streak. Because I wasn't, to be honest, between the cheers for both, you're not 100% sure who the heel is. After no. the DDP and Dink get kicked from ringside. But Yeah. I mean, it, there's DDT chance. There's bad streak chance. Um, they are the the crowd are loving the Freebirds, and um, I mean, why not? You know, I I gotta be honest, I wasn't a fan of the Pistols. Um, no, I mean, it didn't do it for me, even as the Southern Boys and all that, just didn't work. But, but don't get me wrong, um, I love Tracy Smothers. Um, I know I love him. He, he, I tell you what, as well, behind the scenes, there's a hell of there a hell of a lot he he has done for young wrestlers. A heck of a lot. Um, it's been said by many, many people that before ECW, before the cameras were rolling, as soon as they set that ring up, he was there before anybody with the young guys, Mikey Wick, Ripwex and all, all that kind, them kind of people. He was there with the young guys going through drills, helping them out, showing them shit, um, just being the man, you know, and also mentioning Mikey Whipwreck. Um, you know, he, he, his 
main guys were in one hell of a match about a week ago on, on, on WWF TV, WWE TV. Um, you know, Mikey Wick, Ripwreck has done a hell of a lot for young wrestlers. And ECW doesn't get enough shouts for that, for bringing up a certain generation of wrestlers. Um, and Tracy Smothers in the FBI, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, he, that, that would, they were absolutely, absolutely incredible. I don't care what anyone says. The FBI, Tracy Smothers, they were the fucking shit, dude. Yeah. But yes, Young Pistols, not so much. Uh, production was supplying clothesline. You know, I'm starting to get tired of this match already. Um, they missed most of the ref bump as well, yep. which is even yep. more annoying because that's a pretty big part of the match. Although, should a ref be bumping in the first match of the night? I mean, no. I mean, you. If anything, you you want to start your match off with a high energy match, and I don't think maybe I think the free birds were maybe not that bad of a shout, um, just to get the crowd hyped. But they're supposed to be the hills, so really you wanted maybe the young pistols, aka um, the smoking guns before their time, against someone, you know a bit more of a high-flying match because those guys were a bit more high-flying, get the, the crowd a little bit hyped in that. But, you know, it kept being slowed down a little bit by the Freebirds and their heel tactics. So, yeah, maybe not a great choice for a first match either, to be honest. But yeah. after, after this ref bump in the first match, which, again, yeah, doesn't work for either of us, uh, there's a run-in by someone in a feathery cape and a mask who gets called Fantasia. Yeah, it's the Crow Man. I call him the Crow Man. Um... um yeah, I was trying called... to find out who it was, bro. Do you, do you know who it actually was? Uh, I didn't even bother looking because I was, I was still hung up on them calling him Fantasia. So I uh, but he comes. He had yeah, a nice he comes in... cape on. Yeah, he looked lovely. <laughs> he DDTs both pistols. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, and the free birds get the win. Um, and I've just got here, yeah, the pistols got mugged off by a bird, man. They got mugged off and it weren't Coco Beware. No, that's right. Um, it's, fu it's funny because I watched WrestleMania 6 the other day as well and Coco Beware is the first match in WrestleMania 6 and it's where they've got those little the rings on wheels you know yeah. and he's coming down and he's like there with, with the bird on his arm and the fucking bird looks like he's shitting himself yeah he's just doing that like so yeah it weren't Coco Beware but I'll tell you what I was actually going to ring you the other night and say dude we haven't done uh, one of the early WrestleManias. I think we've only done one WrestleMania, WrestleMania 11. No, WrestleMania 11, yeah. We, I mean, we, we can hit back into WrestleManias if the uh, I, people want to hear it. Yeah, because I watched WrestleMania 6 the other night. I was just jamming. And actually, in watching WrestleMania 6, I was watching it in the bedroom in this TV behind me, and I was watching it, and my missus goes, oh, who's he? I've never seen him before. I like him. Guess who it was? Dusty Rhodes, man. Oh, it was fucking dream. Dusty Rhodes. She goes, oh, I really like him. He talks. He's really cool, isn't he? And I'm like, yeah. fucking watch this. <laughs> and then I showed her Hard Times. Hard Times, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Man. Greatest promo of the 80s by far. So, uh, yeah, my, my missus was enamoured by, by Dusty Rhodes, the common man. So I, I had to I tell her the know. story. Yeah, Hard Times. I put that on, the, on our Instagram, I think, uh, a few days ago, just just reminded people how great he was. Um, That's hard times. Brilliant. Um, our next match, I just I, I didn't understand this. It was, it's Ricky Morton um, and Dangerous Danny Spivey. See this this wasn't on the VHS. Uh, yeah, I can imagine why. Um, I mean Morton's mullet and tassels, instant baby face in the instant like, face, bro. Yeah, like the tassel factor. But here's here was the problem with this match, and you know, Spivey dwarfs him. I, I didn't I didn't see the I didn't see the point of this this match. It had to be to get Spivey over or to punish Ricky Morton. I'm not sure which one it was, but in this match because it's so damn short. Danny Spivey has to stoop, like has to really lower his head to take punches from Ricky Morton. Yeah. And it, just, it wasn't good. Mm -mm. Ugly. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's just really bad. Well, um, Ricky and, Morton has actually recently been in AEW, has he not? 
Yeah, he turned up on the uh, Talking Shop and <clears throat> um, pay-per-view, and he's also yep. been rocking around with uh, Robert Gibson in AEW. So, And they said it wasn't a retirement home. They said... <laughs> Stop it. No, that's hard times, Daddy. Yeah. Um, so, so basically, if for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, everybody watching this probably does know, Ricky Morton was um, one half with um, Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, great um, team. Great tag team. <laughs> um, you know, and this match was a squash without really a point either. You know, well, I mean, I have, Spivey's I have no massive. Problem. I have more problems, yes. Yeah, so why are these two big things? This match was never going to work in a competitive nature. Um, decent fall away slam from Spivey. Um, he wins it with a power bomb, and we're done. But Ricky Morton tries to kick out at the three. Doesn't sell it. Yeah. Sell the fucking move. Like, don't, yeah. don't do that to him. You know, they're clearly going to push Spivey on, like, and you're playing around <clears> with him. Trying to kick out of his like mega power bomb, like what the hell is wrong with you? Like, that's, he didn't that's... want to lay down, baby. Yeah, do the he's, job. He got he's got Hogan fever. Yeah, that, that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> that's not going to go down, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Schiavone is our. I mean, this must have hurt him. He was our interviewer. He's not even doing commentary, and he's with the he's with Z Man. This and, is also not on the VHS. Well, I'm, it's probably for the best. It's pretty pointless. I've got it written here, like, just straight underneath pointless. Because instead of talking about anything important, they just recap Missy Hyatt getting kicked out of the uh, the men's locker room on the previous show by Stan Hansen. Yeah. Chewing on his tobacco and all that. and Yeah. He wants to be the first ever female interviewer into the men's locker room, blah, blah, blah. And... You know, we move on. It doesn't. It didn't really. Obviously, there's more it, to it later on, but there's more to it later on. But there's also a funny bit <laughs> in between them talking. So Tony Schiavone, Missy Hyatt, and Z-Man. Um, they talk about Susan Moody winning a competition. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I I don't, think, bet- I don't think she was from Tennessee. Like in our in the last competition at the Royal Rumble. No, that's right. So it weren't yeah. that. Um, but in between that and the next match, there's a guy in the crowd just going like that. <laughs> <laughs> I called him BJ Man. There's literally obviously I saw him in the background in the crowd, and like a, a, anyone who watches did, did regular wrestling. The crowd, did you see the guy in the crowd who almost won the ICO Pro Award? The hench. Yes, the there was there hench. was two. Yeah. There was two guys sitting next to each other and they're like the fourth row back or whatever. He was the, a yeah, monster. I, yeah, I saw him, dude. I saw he, him. He doesn't win the award purely because of, you know, you know, the steroids and stuff. But, yeah, well, <laughs> there's a massive guy in there. There's a massive dude in the crowd. But, yeah, you've got, you've got massive hench dudes, two, like, bodybuilders sitting next to each other and you've also got BJ Man. So keep an eye out for BJ Man uh, as well. And oh. then we get to the next match, yeah. which is uh, Tommy Wildfire. Wild, yeah. yeah, Tommy Wildfire Rich against Nikita Koloff. No, no, Nikita's pretty jacked. He's not going to win the award this this week, but he's pretty big. He's you know he's a yeah. He looked great. Yeah, he looks pretty impressive. He's. Again, not really sure. Is he a heel? Is he a face? Gets a good reaction. So you don't... It's not something you instantly know. I mean, well, we'll find out later on. But the, the, mullet, the mullet on Tommy Rich shows you who the face is. Oh, yeah. It's baby but mullet, yeah. You've got the baby face mullet. But I had a bit of an issue with this match. Um, good. Not, not the match itself, but Tommy Rich is looking... Fucking dated, dude. Really dated. Didn't he win the NWA title in like 81 or something? Do you know what I mean? And he was the partner of... um, Tag team partner of Dusty Rhodes as well, wasn't he? I'm not sure on that one. uh... I think think they talk about it. His former... He's talked about uh, my former partner uh, or whatever. Because he's got another former partner in another match as well. Um. 
but yeah, it's um, yeah, Tommy Rich is looking really outdated, you know. He, he, he even for this time, he was looking outdated, you know. And Koloff is looking really mean, you know. He's looking focused. Mm-hmm. He had like a fucking chain around his neck or something, um, you know. He looked. He looked mean, you know. This should have really been a squash, but Tommy Rich got a lot in. He got a lot in. It did not. It wasn't a lot going on though for me. It just wasn't a. It wasn't a good match, and nothing really happened for me until Tommy Rich hit the ring post. Yeah, and the really strong clothesline from Koloff. Yeah, the, really, really. St- the sickle they call it. The sickle. That's yeah, correct. Russian <laughs> sickle. Although he's from Lithuania, yeah. so they should. He's from Lithuania. Lithuanian yeah. sickle. Um, yeah. He gets the win on a sickle, obviously. It's, it's his finisher. Um, and then we get to one of Chris's favourite moments. Tony Schiavone is in the aisle. with uh, He brings out Johnny B. Bad for his debut. And uh, Theodore Long or Teddy Long, whatever you want to call him. They call him Peanut Head as well. They call him the Ebony Einstein. Oh, do they? I <laughs> don't <laughs> <laughs> they call him the Ebony Einstein, Teddy B. I, Long. I honestly thought that Johnny B. Bad was going to melt. He had that much makeup on. It, it, dude, he says, I'm so pretty, I should have been born a, a little girl, was his exact words. But then he goes, I'm a bad man. Yeah, he's a bad man. <laughs> <I'm a, laughs> you know, like, Dusty, it, just... it, it is probably, I would say, one of the funniest one of the funniest interviews you'll ever see because at this point he hadn't wrestled yet, had he? No. It was his uh, so, television pay per view debut, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they were introducing him, and it's like, you know, it, it is probably one of the funniest promos you, you, you'll watch. It is fucking great. You know, I was in stitches watching it. It was just, you know, I, I'm so pretty, I should have been born a little girl. You know, and he had, like you say, so much makeup on, you think he was working for Avon, you know? <laughs> it was um, it was incredible, but it, he's a bad man. You know? lot, yeah. um, Dusty Rhodes is having to sell the fact that he's got one hell of a right hand. And I wondered what he meant by that. But, um, <laughs> it, you know, he's saying, yeah, he looks like that, but he's mean, he's got a mean right hand, you know, can't wait to see what he's going to do. And to be fair, Johnny B. Bad, I still remember the matches he had with DDP in the early 90s. Absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal matches. I mean, the the, the evolution of the character obviously went in a good way. It took a really good turn because the early Johnny B. Bad is not, you know, good Johnny B. Bad. And you obviously love love that theme music more than anything. (laughs) I bring up Bad Street and you don't even bring up your favourite Johnny B. Bad songs. Like, what's going on? I know, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't like it at all, but yeah. <laughs> um, next up, it's the, it's the computer match. What is this? Like, what sort of gimmick match is this? It's actually not. It's, it's just yeah. a match. <laughs> it's, it's, this again wasn't on the VHS. Was it not? Oh. No. And I, I <laughs> thought this really. This should have been on the VHS because, to be honest, as the match goes, it yes, wasn't that bad. It was a, quite a good match. It's uh, it's Dustin Rhodes, um, fresh off his match at Royal Rumble 1991 in the WWF with his daddy against uh, the computerised man of the 90s, Terry fucking Taylor, uh, the rooster boy, whatever you want to call him. He's with Alexander York and everyone's favourite bodyguard, Mr Hughes. Love Mr. Hughes. He, he, he got about a bit. But also, um, we mentioned Alexandra York was actually Terry Runnels. Yes, Terry Runnels. Um, who would later marry Dustin Rhodes. Well, she yeah, she was Terry something else because she became a Runnels, didn't she? Correct. Yeah. 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 And she was young as hell in this. I mean, Dustin Rhodes looks young as hell. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's some no, there's some great I, lines. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Here he is. I don't know if you can yeah. see his background, but he's he's the natural. The natural, the and young dream. All his glory. These it's UK exclusives again from Galoob. They must have really hated the American market or something because they kept giving out UK exclusives. 
Well, because I, I think there's a story that goes to do with the Galoob thing, where it was something to do with uh, they they didn't think it was gonna sell or something. They didn't think it was it was because the Hasbro's were coming out and stuff, and it was it was a weird thing. It was only they they didn't think the the ones were going to sell in America, so they just released them in the UK. There was a big push at this time to push things in the UK though as well because um, we had it on terrestrial telly um, yeah. around this time. We had it on London Weekend Television, LWT. But for, for those those that are not listening in the UK, um, terrestrial telly is, was our basic four channel package. Like you had your four channels over the aerial before you had cable or sky or anything like that, or any sort of dish networks. That was people it. in America, people channels. in America. Yeah. are like scratching their head going, you guys only had four channels four channels. And what the radio fuck radio. man, yeah. four channels, mate. That's all we had. BBC one, BBC two, ITV That's channel cool. four. And even we didn't have channel four until 1980 something. I will say about these uh, figures, like I know that they're expensive. I know that they're quite, you know, rare and that to, to a lot of people. These I didn't go out and buy these recently. I've had these since probably about 1992. Um, you know, I was quite lucky enough that my, uh, my folks knew my passion for wrestling pretty early on and would buy up anything and everything with a WWF or WCW logo on it. So I'll tell you what as well. That that natural dusting road is worth a few quid, man. Now, yeah, it is. There's a few galoobs that are worth quite a bit of money, and I think Jordan's got most of them. It's the UK um, exclusives, man. <laughs> UK exclusives. UK exclusives. Oh, so, sorry, um, America. Sorry to you. You, so, get, you get everything else. You get tons of stuff way better than us. So, like, you know, get, let us have our UK exclusives. Leave us alone. Yeah, man. Um, Dusty, I noticed Dusty's putting his boy over pretty big here. Yeah, he's like he's my boy. I love him. Uh, he he had a meeting with the with the York Foundation this morning. He said, "Daddy, what am I gonna do?" <laughs> he's like, I fucking love the dream, that's man. Like, like, that like, one move that he learned from his uncle Dick Murdoch. That's right. Yeah, because yeah. he says, "I don't know anything about computers. All I know is everything my daddy taught me." You know, yeah. great stuff. I, there was a there was a messy spot as well where. Um, it looked like uh, Dustin was going for the bionic elbow thing, standing up, and in some strange way, Terry Taylor just di dives at him. Maybe it's the defence for the move, but he just dove into me. It looked a real shit, shit mess. <laughs> like, it, was, it was, it was all you, over the place. You, you had, you had the, uh, you had Terry Taylor. Um, keep rolling out of the ring and like referring to the computer. So they were like, it was like the, the computer like was telling him. Yeah, it was like the computer was telling him what to do, like what yeah. moves to do. They kept reply. It's like the old um, computer says no. You know? game of chess on the PC. It's fucking crazy, man. Um, crazy. I stuff. noticed that there was a lot of camera cutting to the crowd, and it just started to get a bit annoying. Like I just wanted to watch wrestling. I didn't want to see the crowd like waving and smiling and stuff. Yeah, I could already see the beefed up muscle man in the background in the front row. So that's all I needed. <laughs> that's, all, that's all anyone needs, mate. Um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't a bad match. I thought, you know, the psychology of it was pretty good, yeah, oh, yeah. and they're trying to trying to put the natural over. Terry Taylor was a good heel. The whole York Foundation thing, um, you know, Terry Runnels. Obviously, she wasn't a Runnels yet. Um, you know, Alexander York. She's there, you know, like an office bod. Um, glasses on, suit, and that with the computer. Yeah. The computer would play a role. Uh, in the, in it with um, what's his name, Mr. Hughes. Well, uh, later I, on. it feels like the finish. I mean, there's a there's some beautiful stuff in there. The clothesline's really nice from Dustin. He hits the bulldog, and there's some you know York gets up on the apron, and then it feels like Mr. Hughes is either waiting for his cue or missing his cue because he's just he's standing around. He's up there for a while, isn't he? He's up there for an age, and then he hit. Um, he tries to. He puts a glove on and tries to hit Dustin and hits Terry Taylor. And yeah, it just took. It took. It just 
didn't didn't like gel well at all. And I really thought Dusty was going to get up and get in there. He, he was. He was like, I don't like this at all. I, I don't like this at all. Um, but he didn't. And Dustin got the win with the, the gloved punch thing. I don't know whether it was a loaded glove. Who knows? WCW it could have been, you know, one of those special Michael Jackson rhinestone gloves that we don't know about. It was an international object, whatever yeah, it was. International object. There you go. Not foreign, because foreign was a bad word at Turner. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Dustin gets the win. Looks pretty good. And yes, he's going to get a push. Yes, he's Dusty's son. But he he busted his hump like in WCW. He really he didn't like he didn't ride any coattails. It felt like. No, I mean he he, he put in the work. He had some uh, great matches with stunning Steve Austin. Uh, we've covered them already in a, one of our previous episodes. Yeah. He. he he busted. He busted his 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 back. Um, he put in the work, and I will always, I will always respect Dustin Rhodes for for the Gold Dust gimmick alone. I mean, it. it I loved the Gold Dust gimmick. I I loved it. I I thought it was a rib giving it to him, and he basically. Stuck up oh, two fingers no and said, different, "No different to the rib given to his dad with the, with the dots, you know." And like, he got it over. Yeah, he got it over, dude. You know, I I was what like I say, I was watching WrestleMania six the other day, and we were just about to watch the um, you know, we watched the little promo of Dusty Rhodes, and then I said to my missus, "I said, wait." She goes, "What? What for?" I said, "Just wait, because you're gonna see Sweet Sapphire, and Dusty Rhodes, and Miss Elizabeth." Dancing very yeah. soon, and with their fire, you know, and they're dancing at WrestleMania six. Even Elizabeth, you know, dancing like yeah. it, it was fucking incredible <laughs> because it was that that joint that 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 intergender tag match, you know, um, Randy Savage, um, Sensational Sherry against Dusty Rhodes and Sweet Thefar, and it was a great great match, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's. He, I, I, they, they gave him the polka dots um, as a rib. He got it over. Um, you know, they gave gold dust to him as a rib to Dustin. He got it over, and he, he literally, he got it over like you wouldn't believe. It was. There's no one else. I don't. You know, when they say there's no one else that could play that character, no. there is no one else that could have been gold dust. It would have been laughable. Well, Cody, um, Cody played Stardust, didn't he? So. People argue, arguably, as well, saying that that was probably his best moment. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, let's not get on to Cody as well, dude. Yeah. There's. Uh... Um, next up, it's uh, this is a direct quote from Jim Ross: "Never work with children or animals because Big Josh has pet bears." And this is crazy. I. This is crazy. I'm not sure, like. They talk about Big just having pet bears, but Black Bart is on his way to the ring with some of the best generic cowboy music I've ever heard. Like, it's great. Yeah, terrific. Um, Big Josh then with two bears on leads. I'm not sure I quite walking. like it. Yeah. No, on their walking on their hind legs. That's actually illegal in this country now. We're not allowed to have um, circuses with animals anymore yeah. in the UK. Banned. Uh, as always... It's another UK exclusive America. Look away now. It's Big Josh. Big Josh. In all his glory. Another one that, you know, works out at a lot of English pounds nowadays if you are trying to buy one. Bro, that's, it's big money if you want a Big Josh. And if you've got his axe handle, you fuck it. Yeah. You're looking at least 200 quid, man. I'm not joking. I'm, at least. I've got to be honest, I've got a funny feeling that my mum probably paid about 4 99 for him. Like yeah. <laughs> back, in the day, back in the old, uh, well, the catalogues, you know, all that stuff. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Right. Whatever, yeah. Right. But yes, yeah, as as we go on, um, yeah, we didn't like the bit with the bears on the leads. Although the bit, the, one of the funniest part of funny parts, one of the bears that was just pissing as they were walking down to the ring. You know what? That's a big fuck you to WCW for putting them on a lead. That's right. Uh, <laughs> it's it just having a piss on the entrance ramp. So these two guys. Big Josh, aka Matt Bourne, yeah, um, and Black Bart, 
both of them. I mean, this should have been Larry Zabisco. Um, it should have been uh, Big Josh versus Larry Zabisco. Larry. But... I could imagine Larry didn't want to do a job. No, and but he, he, I mean, the the story was that he he his knee wasn't healing up too well, so um, Black Bart stepped in. But both of these guys, Big Josh and Black Bart, they'd been around the block, dude. They yeah. have been around the block. Um, if you watch, there's a shoot interview with Black Bart on Title Match Wrestling. So if you type in on YouTube, Title Match Wrestling. Black Bart shoot interview. Um, the guy has been around the block, dude. Um, stories of um, him sniffing coke with Piper in a car, smoking weed with Piper, choking and getting out of the car and being sick and then all this crazy shit. Um, black Bart has been around the block, dude. He's got a really interesting story about Dustin Rhodes as well because uh, Dustin Rhodes used to actually live with him. Uh, lived, he, he lived in his spare room for a little bit. Mm. So um, these are two veterans. Uh, Matt Bourne had been around the block. He'd oh, been yeah. at Memphis. It, was, you it know. was quite funny. It was quite ironic, actually, of Dusty to talk about Big Josh not knowing many holds. When yeah. we all know it was Matt Bourne and he knew probably all the holds. But yeah, Matt Bourne he, he was go. seasoned. Um, yeah. Seasoned veterans. One. So this this match here, this is two seasoned veterans. And this match, again, wasn't on the VHS. Yeah, but, um, I mean, the bear thing, probably not best to have that on the VHS at the time. I mean, it, it, yeah. they thought it was good enough to have on the event, so why yeah. not put it on the VHS, you know? Um, Matt Bourne, obviously, would go on to put on the ridiculous... I mean, he made the best out of some pretty weird gimmicks, let's be, be honest, because he would be Doink the Clown, and anyone who's anyone figured that the clown was going to suck the minute you walked out. But Matt Bourne took that to some really dark places. It, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, right, dude, Doink the Clown, done by Matt Bourne again. This is another one where no one really else could have pulled it off like him because yeah. he had that darkness behind his, in his persona anyway, naturally. Um, but it should have been... Doink, Doink should have gone a lot further than it did. But this is WWF creative again, turning him face. We've said this, we've said this before. We've said this before. Doink the clown. The clowns do not work in wrestling and they never will. Hell, not even, anymore. Even the, even the ICP didn't even work in wrestling. So. Oh, dude, you know what's funny? I've seen, um, I seen a post, little tangent. I've seen a post on one of the wrestling groups about the oddities. Because you had ICP, you had um, Golga, okay. you know, you had the fucking massive, like, Kurgan giant. Uh, Big Kurgan as well, yeah. Kurgan, yeah, you know, Luna. Yeah, Luna. Luna had a shot in there. Luna. Uh, and who was the big guy that was like a giant? Giant Silver, yeah. Giant Silver, yeah. You know, what a crazy little group, you know. that John Tenter was yeah. in that as Golga, obviously. Um, you know, it's... Um, it's it's really strange, you know, like uh, it's just really strange sometimes the yeah. things that you see in uh, the wrestling world. But yeah, Doink the Clown should have stayed heel. Could have, he was a really dark character. Should have been really really great for years and years. But they turned him face, and then everyone just fucking it. hated him. Yeah, they blew it. Um, they buried him. Some of Big Josh's punches here look a little bit snug, a little bit stiff, but. It looks okay. It looks like they're working stick like just fine. I think they're friends. I think they go way back, dude. Black okay. Bart and, and Matt Bourne go way back, dude. Um, I suggest anyone watches that Black Bart shoot interview on Title Match Wrestling. Some really interesting stuff. He's got stories about everyone, man. Yeah. Stories about everyone. Honestly, great stuff. Josh hits the earthquake splash, uh, earthquake squash splash, whatever it looks like, where yeah, he just sits on them for a three count. Um, but then, but you've got you've got you've got Jr. in the dream talking about well what do you call this move? Is that I call it the butt drop or the yeah, butt the, bump? Yeah, the butt. The, yeah. the butt butt bump or something. You know, he does the log roll as well, yeah. where he's lying on the floor and he you know does like a he, he puts his feet on him like a log roll. You know, um, that was quite amusing. Found that quite funny. Yeah, it's um, 
Yeah, it's, you know, just it's another squash. Like for a pay per view, another squash. Yeah, not so great. Not the last squash of the night, but we'll get to that. We're in. We're entering the danger zone next. Um, Paulie is dressed as a. He calls it a cowboy, but they Dusty and Jr. Both mentioned they've never seen. They've, if they ever saw a cowboy dressed like that, he'd probably get a whooping. So yeah. Mm-mm. He had the cowboy hat on and shorts. So. Yeah, and like a Fred Perry like polo shirt. You know what I mean? He says, "Oh, he, I'm the only real cowboy in New York." Uh, some serious production issues again, where there's no sound, no nothing coming from the mic. So Paulie just goes off on one on the idiot from Florida, who's probably running sound here. His guest is Stan Hansen. Uh, he's talking with a mouthful of tobacco, and uh, he or, or it could be tobacco, it could be dog shit for all I know. It looks, it looks like he's been chewing a cigar it and like it's just it. hanging out of his mouth. It's crazy. Um, it's an absolute shitter of an interview because Hanson's just shouting and yelling, he's calling out Dustin Rhodes. Um, if you step out, if you step out from behind your daddy, but I noticed there's a few Paul Lee chants. Yeah, dude. I could hear them. Yeah, they were quite um, quite audible at like towards the end of that um, segment, I guess. And speaking of segments, the one that was cut off the video. This is, I mean, this is a winner of a segment. If you've ever seen a, you know, a bin on fire or something, and you know, you can smell the garbage or the rubbish coming from it this is one of those segments welcome to oz <laughs> uh, welcome to oz i messy <laughs> i messaged jordan right I, my internet was fucking up on these days when i was watching these other segments that weren't on the vhs and i was watching this next segment of oz and i was just I was absolutely blown away. I had to watch it again on another day. It was the most creepy, cursed segment you will ever see oh, in, in, in wrestling. It was, I, don't know, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, yeah, the fans have already turned on it because uh, I don't know. I've not really seen The Wizard of Oz properly, you know. My missus already curses me for not watching some of these films like and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's is it Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Lion and someone else. They've got they're, all the characters there. Dancing there. around, they're there too. Um the guy is saying, Welcome to ours, like in a little funny voice. He's it, the wizard. He's he, actually oh, mentioned, uh, yeah, he's actually called the wizard, right? And you you can hear Oz. Is he the, is he the one with the pet monkey? Yeah, he's the guy with the monkey with fucking diaper on. So you've got a guy in a rubber face and a wig, like a wizard, with a monkey on his shoulder, shitting in a diaper on a lead, just constantly repeating, welcome to ours, welcome to ours, we're almost there, we're almost there. It's like, and it's creepy, is all I can say. It is, it is... Cursed. Would Jim Ross and Dusty have to try and sell this this hot garbage to um, to the viewers? And what can you do with that? How, for two, com- he says this is a spectacle like I've never seen before. I can imagine, like, but it's Oz, you know, the great Kevin Nash in green, covered in sparkles, probably spray painted his hair grey. He did. Um, yeah against Tim Parker now this is obviously it's gonna be competitive like it's two hot <laughs> going at it. It's a three move squash. It I mean yeah I mean it's um Nash, Nash used all nearly all five of his moves though so you know I was gonna say okay. Nash nearly used all five of his moves but um that's, that's it, a even like thing for anyone that yeah it, <laughs> it but it's the whole thing where he gets in the ring and they're selling I mean because he's a big guy, you know, they're saying, look at the size of this Oz, look at the size of him. And they've put like some, some mask on him as well with a massive wig and a massive hat. 
But he's he's hench, you know, and he's walking to the ring and he steps over the rope. You know, he's selling there. I'm a big guy. I'll step over the top rope. Um, he gets in, takes off his hat, and then his eyes are all, like, wide, and he's, you know, looking around and everything. Welcome it's, to us. Welcome to us. Welcome to us. This is so creepy. It's fucking it's creepy. Crap. It's, it's so weird. Crap. And then, yeah, it's, it's a three-move squash. It's literally, you know. One of the mm, best three-move squashes I've ever seen. It's, but it's great. No, it's great. It's good. It's good. You know, it's good. They sell in. He's a big, mean dude. I mean, even Jordan said to me that the intro is longer than the fucking match. It and really it is, yeah. Um, Missy tries to get into the locker room again, and Stan Hansen clears her off and gives her a little spanking with his hat. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny because she's like, oh, you know... We girls can do, women can do the same job. This is 1991, guys. You know, and but the thing is, she's saying this while wearing a suit jacket with a bra underneath. Um, so yeah, very independent woman. Bitch, but always going to get spanked by that hat. Let's be honest. Yeah, she was. I mean, but you know the funniest thing though, dude. Yeah, you see, <laughs> you, <laughs> you see. His cue. You, yeah, he misses his cue. So like, she's just about walking in. She's like, because she's like fawning over Z-Man and she thinks it's Tom Zenk in the shower because yeah. she's saying to him before oh, when I go into the dressing room you think you might be taking a shower or whatever and he's like oh I might be there you know rah, rah, rah. and then as she's talking to the camera you just see Stan Hansen like pop his head around the corner for about half a second and then step back and then she steps in the room and he just comes out all crazy and starts whooping her with his hat you know what the hell are you doing in here and you know, and then there's a gag about his his boxer shorts. Yeah. You know, wearing like <laughs> size fucking extra large bit of boxer shorts. Like now, I didn't know why WCW had such a hard on for these matches, but it's another taped fist match. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do they love them so much? Um, I I don't know. Well, taped fist. I, Fifth, the tape fifth. Tape fifth, tape fifth match. Yeah. Um, right. Sorry, I, I've got separate notes for the matches that were left off the VHS. So yeah. this is this is now two big uh, stars. Two big stars in our match this time. It is uh, it is flying Brian in his UK exclusive blue. There it is another UK exclusive for everyone. Please don't hate. The, <laughs> yeah, because Flying Brian uh, in this match is wearing his, his Bengals, his yeah, tiger yeah. striped pants because they were selling the fact that he was one of the Bengals, weren't he? Mm -hmm. uh, American football. He won the Bravery Award. He did, yes. He's, he was, yeah, he was, he was a, he was a walk-on in like college or university or something, wasn't he? He didn't, he didn't get the scholarship or anything like that. He just, he just turned up and played and like got in. So I mean that's that's pretty pretty skillful, pretty wild. Um, and so Flying Brian is taking on Barry Windham. There's Barry. Yeah, dude. And Barry's wearing a belt. He's not a champion, but he is wearing a belt because I've got a few belts still all over the place. Uh, Barry is not a UK exclusive. No. <laughs> it is a it is a tape fist match. So obviously, in any tape fist match that I've ever seen, the best thing to do is start with wrestling holds. Obviously, because that's the point of the match, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Obviously. I just, yeah, I just, that's the first thing I saw. was like, oh, they're going to do, you know, arm ringers and, you know, arm bars and stuff. Tape, like taped fist yeah. showdown is what they were calling it. The taped fist showdown. And to be fair, um, Brian Pillman was pretty ripped. He was pretty, um, pretty toned. Yeah. He hits in a really lovely drop kick uh, whilst uh, Barry was on the top rope. I thought that was yeah. really well done. Um, this match doesn't go very long. It's a tape fist match, so maybe, yeah, you can understand it doesn't. Both guys blade as well pretty quickly. Really early. They yeah. both get busted open early. Um, there's, a, there's a really good spinning wheel kick from, from Pillman. I'm calling him Pillman. I always, I'll always end up calling him Pillman. Flying Brian, yeah, you know, it's always going to be Pillman to me. Um, 
mega stiff chops, really good stuff in that. Like I always, you know, good chop is always there's, um, worth it. There's a, there's a good uh, belly to back suplex from Wyndham. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Throws fucking Pillman, launches him. Uh, but uh, cheap finish. Well, cheap, yeah. cheap enough. Cheap though. enough. Yeah. Uh, Barry Wyndham's got his fans in this because you can hear them cheering him on. Um, he hits a low blow and, uh, and the superplex, which he is the master of, apparently. And um, he gets the win. There wasn't a lot of punches in this take fist match. There was hardly any. Yeah. And it seemed like the only two punches busted the other person open. Yeah. <laughs> they bladed for no reason. No <laughs> reason at all. Um, more production brilliance tonight. Because someone on the mic says, are we live? Because are we live? Yeah. Because he's not sure. It is, the, yeah. it is a new segment, new interview segment called the Diamond Mine uh, talk show. He's, uh, we get another good guard from, uh, from DDP. <laughs> but for a talk show, he doesn't talk a lot. He just shows pre-tapes. Yeah. It's a pre-tape of Sting saying that him and Luger are nervous. It's a pre-tape with Steiners, whatever. And then he says he's got a new new man in his stable. He's got a new man in his life. Um, and it's <laughs> it's the diamond stud. And it is Scott Hall looking ripped and wonderful. Yeah, man. I like the diamond stud, man. Yeah, diamond stud. Again, he wouldn't be around long because he would... In 1992, he would be Razor Ramon and he would take whatever he wanted. Chico? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you <yeah>, made Chico. Uh, <laughs> and they are looking for a stud et, whatever that means in today's. They're looking for a lady. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Scott Hall's looking lean and mean here. He's looking really good. And uh, you've said it before on another show, you know. By all means, guys, go back and check our other WCW shows in the archives. You liked the Diamond Stud. You thought he could have gone somewhere. You also liked yeah. him in Vegas, yeah. Like I do, yeah. Yeah, we were, I remember those from other shows like we've done on early WCW. But they dropped the ball, as they do frequently in WCW. And they let what who would become two of WWF's biggest stars fall through their fingers. You know, it would, you know, those two guys carried WWF from 92 to, to what, 96? It's like, this This for me reminds me of Man United, okay? And I'm using a football slash soccer, whatever you want to call it. I, we call it football. It is always football. Don't Because you, know. you kick the ball with your foot. There you go. So we call it football. <laughs> well, I do love the NFL, but... Yeah, it's a football analogy for me. It's Man United letting Paul Pogba go for nothing and then spending £90 million to bring him back. And that's what WCW did here with Hall and Nash. Let them go, let them go make themselves big names and then have to pay them millions of dollars to come back and do something. It's... It's, I mean, it's a massive mistake, which is why, obviously, these heads of department, WCW guys, don't last, which includes, you know, Jim Hurd. You know, he's a, there's a name you don't hear a lot from WCW fans, but... That's right. <clears throat> because Jim Hurd will make the biggest mistake later on. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous how they let so many people go in this era to go and just make massive names for themselves in the WWF. But I, I think that was because they didn't really, they weren't really pushing the mid card guys. There wasn't a lot of creativity around what to do with these guys. Um, it was more focused on your main event guys, your, your Lugers, your Stings, your Steiners. Um, Again, like even so the Steiners would be gone. Pretty soon, you know the only ones Luca would be gone as well. Like this is madness. A lot of their main events have disappeared to go and do whatever they wanted. Um, but we'll move on. Uh, our next match is the but it's another gimmick match. I don't know what's going on here. The Battle of the Giant Stretcher match. Did I get that right? 
Yeah, dude, I fucking hated this match, right? Yeah. Look, the, only thing, the only thing I liked in this match was the, uh, the entrance for, and, uh, uh, for Sid. Sid. Sid looks a million bucks in this. Sid awesome. had it all, man. We've, he could have possibly won the ICO Pro Award as well. He is, he is a top contender for the ICO Pro Award. I was going to change it up this week and let you pick the winner because I've got three in mind. Um, I, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. It's yeah. not Sid. My, my choice is not Sid. Okay. Um, my, my other choices are in other matches. Yeah, they come later on. But Sid, yeah. We speak about Sid a lot on this show, on our show. We, anytime he's on one of the shows that we're reviewing, we always talk about how fucking amazing Sid is and was. He's like, great. He had the look, he had the charisma, he was decent in the ring. I don't care what anyone says. And it's another UK exclusive. Yeah, dude, I've Sid got that pink. figure. Sid in pink. You got him in pink as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's wearing he's wearing gold as well. He's wearing a belt. He's uh, I've got black singlet, Sid. Um, from anywhere he darn well pleases as well. That's correct. The introduction. That is Sid Vicious, and That's he's him. On the the big guy who would also leave WCW for WWF. <laughs> there he is, El Igante, another UK exclusive. You guys really missed out in America. I don't know what happened, like with the Galoob lot. They really hated you. Um, maybe <laughs> there after. is a story. There is a story to why it happened, and I'll I will I'll go back and find out. It was in one of the threads on on somewhere on yeah. on a Facebook group that I'm on when there was someone was telling the story about why the Galoobs the UK exclusives. Um, and yeah, Sid and El Gigante on in this Battle of the Giants stretcher match. Um, it's a squash. It's it's disappointing though, dude, because Sid looks great in this, and he's got the charisma. And um, you know, I I still actually have a really when I think of Psycho Sid, it makes me hate Shawn Michaels a little bit, and it makes me hate. Um, Hulk Hogan a little bit more than I hate him anyway. Um, because he, he wasn't really given a fair shout, I don't think, in WWF. When he was in WWF, we've, we've, we've seen one of the greatest promos of all time when he's in the locker room with Jenny McCarthy and, and, and the Million Dollar Team. So, yeah. You know, what, what do you think he's doing right now, Nick? <laughs> he feels a fire in his belly, and that fire, it's fear. You know, Sid was the man, dude. I still vividly remember Sid coming down to the ring and the crowd absolutely going insane. Him dripping with the water, his curly hair, the, the, the leather waistcoat, punching, you know... Spudding all the people in the there crowd. Was a, there was a show we did where he returned, like he, you know, was the surprise, wasn't he, in WCW? <clears throat> Might have been a 93 show or something like that. And uh, the fans go nuts for him. Nuts, dude. You know, who, you know, he's the man that rules the world. You know, he. But bearing in mind, this, was, is, May, this is May 19th. Um, Sid would. Uh, he would make his WWF debut on a house show on May 28th. He was gone. He was gone, dude. Yeah, and I'm not was. surprised because, I mean, El Gigante, whatever you want to say about him, he, 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 he should have been better than he was. I don't think he had a great end to his life either. He was a bit penniless, you know. He, um, he was a trier, man. I'll give him his credit. He was a trier. Absolutely, player. man. You know, and he couldn't play basketball anymore because of his injuries. That was it. That's correct. You know, Argentinian um, former basketball player. Um, he actually had a little run with in the WWF with the Undertaker. I remember it was in a Royal Rumble. He does. Yeah, he gets he takes out he the Undertaker turns up. Royal Rumble and he gets a he gets a WrestleMania match with the Undertaker and they are. I mean, they're pretty special nowadays. Giant Gonzalez, you know, he was the giant Gonzalez. He's got so, the Hasbro figure as well. He, yeah, he's yeah, he's got a Hasbro figure. Um, yeah. 
you know, so it, it, I mean, to be fair, he couldn't wrestle really. Um, he he was showing light all the time in in his strikes and stuff like that. You know, Sid was giving it a go, but dude, this match for the reason why I hate this match, yeah, one of them. Um, I mean, going back to the fact of when I was talking about Sid makes me hate Hulk Hogan a little bit more is the fact that when he was in WWF, you know, they actually blanked out the crowd noise saying Sid, 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 Sid. Um, And Hogan put a a stop, basically, or or Vince. Yeah, they put a stop to the push because um, he was more over. This is a common thing because the Royal Rumble 92 on the actual show, the cheers for Sid eliminating Hogan are pretty wild. Yeah. And that's something that they they dub and edit over when they replay it at a Saturday night's main event. And it's like, well, we all saw it. We all saw how, how big the cheers were. It's like the cheers that The Undertaker got when he beat Hogan uh, Survivor Series and stuff like that. When, which we've covered. That's correct. Yeah, it's, it's stuff like that that, you know, WWE need to, or WWF need to, use and to get their own narrative over and that's fine like you know you do what you gotta do but we all saw what we saw we all heard what we heard and but Sid Sid played his own part in his WWF downfall a little bit because he didn't want to be a babyface Vince wanted him to be a babyface and Sid always figured he would be a big heel and figured he could make more money as a heel champion I don't know who got in his ear and told him that because... Probably Shawn Michaels. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It was... I'm telling you. It was Shawn, dude. I've got to be honest. Because... If, if Sid had stuck around after WrestleMania 8, he probably be, would have been the one to beat Savage and not Flair. But... I love Sid. Yeah. I fucking love Psycho Sid, man. I absolutely... I think he had it all. He absolutely had it all. He might not have got the best advice. Um, he you loved know, the but... as well a bit too much. He what? He loved his softball a bit too much as well. That's a sort of like famed story that he loved playing softball instead of going to like, you know, doing house shows and stuff. But <laughs> he seems um, like a genuinely nice guy as well. If you yeah. um if you watch the shoot interviews that he's got online, he, he he does seem like a genuinely nice guy. But yeah, Sid Sid would get beat by the claw hold. Um But but sorry, dude, that's what pisses me off about this match. It's supposed to be a fucking stretcher match. Yeah. But literally, he puts the claw on him and the referee just counts. Yeah, it's a, it's a squash. And obviously Terrible. It's, obviously, it's Sid's last appearance in WCW at this point. He May 28th, so what? That, that's like nine days. And he's, he's packed off and he's in the WWF. He wouldn't appear on TV until July, though. So probably there was like a no-compete sort of TV thing going on. Um, and just in case you didn't want to wash over that match quick enough... Uh, a one man gang and Kevin Sullivan turn up um, and they chuck some powder in. Uh, he gone taste eyes. The selling's farcical in this. It's just bad. It's terrible, dude. And you actually, you actually see he gone taste say Sullivan, you motherfucker, as well. Did you hear the fans singing Sid out? Yeah. They're singing na 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 na, you know, and all that like. They obviously know he's sold out and he's gone to the Fed. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, how does news like that get out in 1991? Dirt sheets, bro. Oh, the rag yeah, sheets. The rag sheet, yeah. <laughs> As Hogan would call yeah, them. Rag sheet again. Uh, <laughs> They're a dinosaur, brother. <laughs> yeah, the internet's the way to go, right? That's right, man. It's the way forward. And it's, yeah, no one ends up going out on the stretcher. So what was the point? I like the way that El Gigante actually just picked up the gurney and just walked to the ring with it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, great. Our next match is the Thunder Doom cage match, which, as it you know, it's, it's, you know, doesn't need to explain it. It is Doom taking on each other. It's Hacksaw, Butch Reed, and Ron Simmons. You know, Ron Simmons is about to get the push that he clearly deserves because he is. He's excellent. Uh, Theodore Long is suspended above the ring as well in a little cage for some reason. Because he's, yeah, he's sided, he's sided with Butch Reed. He's sided, isn't he? sided with Butch. Um, we get a little note that Ron Simmons is Burt Reynolds' favourite wrestler. That, I mean, that in itself is... It's great. Yeah. 
Didn't they used to go to school together or something? I don't know, but that... yeah, you're definitely getting a push of your Burt Reynolds' favourite wrestler. You know. It's um and but these are the guys I think that are tied for the ICO Pro Award, dude. Oh, you think? Possibly Butch Reed and Ron Simmons. Okay. But Butch, fucking Butch Jack. Jack. Yeah. But there's also someone in a, a, a coming a, a later match as well. Yeah. My my main contender is in the next one. Um, yeah, uh, Ron Simmons gets an early cut. Uh, they, again, more blading. It's it loses its appeal with more people blade over the course of the night. It, you know, the cage match is probably the best place for it to happen. Not in the take fist match with no punches. But I didn't mind this match. It was a little bit punch kick, punch kick for a bit. But it was a bit shit, yeah, for a bit. Occasional sort of cage bump, which wasn't wasn't excellent. But I don't know why was Butch Reed looking so weak for someone so stacked. It, it's a weird one. Um, I don't know if he's getting old or he's, it looks like he's trying to wade through toffee when he's throwing his punches and stuff. It's like. Maybe, you know, like I say, man, he was on the juice, bro. And, you yeah. know, he, he was he was very large. He was real large, man. And he, I don't think he had the cardio. I just don't think he had the cardio. Well, yeah, that's why it went in slow motion, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it was all Reed for a long while in this match. It really was. It was, it was him just throwing Ron Simmons around, um, smashing him into the cage, you know, talking to Teddy Long, saying... Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. I've got, you know, I've, don't worry, mate. I've got your back. Don't worry. Because, yeah, uh, obviously Ron Simmons wanted to get hold of Teddy Long. Um, yeah, it was all read for a while. And then, obviously, Simmons had to come back. Um, nice spine buster. Yeah. Um, Teddy, uh, Theodore, tries to drop a tra chain into the ring. Ron yeah. Simmons ducks it, ducks the punch, and hits the spine buster for the win. It's, again, it's nothing special for a cage match. No, lots of go run go. You know, he's obviously a big star in the college football world down in Florida. Um, yeah, they talk about him then retiring his jersey, and yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a common theme across our shows that involve Ron Simmons. Um, yeah, he is a and yeah, they get the win, and then we get a really nice video package on what's coming next because great, they they knew they had to sell the hell out of this match before it went on to pay per view, and they did. And I give them. I give them a lot of credit on this because they made this match massive. I mean, it, it, it says it says on the front of the VHS that is PW uh, Pro is. Pro Wrestling Illustrated Match of the Year, and it's something that I brought up in uh, in a group in the uh, it's the NWA WCW group on Facebook. Uh, Shout out to Travis because Travis does a lot of work on that, and it's a, it's a massive group, and there's a lot of people in there. And I uh, I posed I posed the question to the group that is this the best tag team, one of the best tag team matches in WCW history slash NWA history? A lot of people said yes, a lot of people said no. I probably think I'm probably going with yes. It is. It's it's a great match. It is a great match. I would have to have a bit more of a think about it. Um, as to whether it was uh, the best, but there was, I think, the reason why I might say that it wasn't the best is probably the finish. The finish, um, is the finish but we'll obviously get to the reasons on the. We'll finish. get to that, yeah. Um, but um, go on. I was, I was going to say this is the match that has, I would say, the ICO Pro winner for this week. Yeah, for sure. Um, it is. It is our. It is the world tag team title scene. This is what makes it so good. It's a tag team match winning the match of the year award. You know, it's not often you see that, especially nowadays, because tag team wrestling is in the in the toilet. Let's be honest. You know, it, anyone, it's been in the toilet. Does anyone care about the young bucks? No, but the the thing is, man, it went in the toilet ever since Enzo and Big Cass <laughs> split up, dude. <laughs> It was gone before then, man. No, dude, they were bringing it back, man. They were bringing it back. Um, funny. They were bringing it back. One point on this for Sting and Luger dodging their own pyro. Um, did their best to stay out of the way of it. It is the World Tag Team titles. It's Sting and Luger 
US champion Luger and Sting, his good friend against the Steinberg. So, you've got Luger. It is Luger. Good with man. his belt. And Galoob figure. I didn't. With I the didn't. card. He's been taken off the card, but yeah. there's the card. I left Scotty in the box, but again, here comes another UK exclusive. Yeah, dude, I've got that bad boy. Yeah, green and black, wild sort of attire. Um, we've also got Stinger, oh, look at the that. World Championship Wrestling sticker book. Pristine, that is. Dude, it's pristine, still sealed. I've got two versions. I've got one of them that is complete with every single sticker, and I've got this one which is unopened, and it still has the push-out WCW cardboard ring. Oh, this is minty, bro. Minty, not a crease on it. <laughs> still with the original wrapping, still sealed. Memorabilia mayhem has got to be the title of the show because it's fuck it's, yeah, uh, dude. Um, Absolutely. It is. It is a massive babyface match. Like it is. I don't think you can convey how big this match is with WCW biggest stars by far. You know, Ric Flair obviously is Ric Flair. He can be whatever he wants on the show, but this is. <sighs> These are your biggest stars on the show. And as with any great babyface match, it starts with a handshake. Um, yeah, it's yeah. um it's a very, you know, like I say, we've got your Ico Pro winner. And who who would you say it is? Scotty Steiner, baby. Scotty Steiner. Steiner. And and dude, he did one thing I'll say about his bloody singlet as well. Oh, it's cracking. It, it's dude, he but he's even Dude, even his butt cheeks are toned to the point they're ripped, yeah? And it's like trying to eat his singlet. It looks like he is, he's naked. Like, it's crazy. Like, he must be doing them bum busters every day. He squeezes really tight, then he lets loose. Oh, he squeezes really tight, then lets loose. Scotty Steiner, the ICO Pro Award winner. Congratulations. He is, 100%. We're agreed on that one, dude. He's um, ripped to shit. Luger gets it. Luger and uh, Rick start the match, and Luger's getting his power moves over pretty quickly. But the minute Rick takes over with that German suplex Steiner line combo, the place goes nuts. Mm -hmm. And it to me seems like the Steiners are the are the team, like the fans are going to get behind in this match until Sting gets in the ring. Um, yeah, they go absolutely crazy for that, that combo. Luger retaliates with a clothesline. Like Rick sells like mad. He flip, does a backflip from a co clothesline. And it's just, this match is just already, uh, you're hooked. You're already... I've, got a hot, I've got a hot take with the Steiner brothers, dude. Go on. Uh, Rick should have, should have been bigger than Scott, 100%. Rick was better than Scott by a, a country mile. Um, and it's disappointing that he, he, he didn't go further singly than he did. Uh, I mean, it's even been said by wrestlers in the business that Rick was, was, was better than Scott by well, a mile. This is it. Rick was excellent in the ring. He also had that ready-made sort of, you know, the dog face gremlin thing. The ooh, 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 ooh. The barking, you know, fans would always get behind that sort of thing. But it's been said that when a breakup was approached in the early 90s and in the WWF, Scotty and the, Scotty and Boat and Rick both said no. Scotty in particular said no to breaking up the team that early. Like, and I can see why. They, they were very, very successful and they made a lot of money as a tag team. But I mean, Scott, Scott Steiner, I mean, there, there's a beautiful video. There's an absolutely beautiful video that is around and it's and it had to take if you type in go to facebook right and i might even be able to find this as we speak and if you go onto facebook and just type in on the videos never go full scott steiner oh, right yeah, yeah, I know it's fun. it is it is for me it is one of the the, the funniest never go full yeah. scott steiner uh and it is just the guy was insane, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the most memorable. There you go. All you got to do is type in Never Go Full Scott Steiner on Facebook, and you find it. It's on the backstage brawl page from the 9th of May. And it's all of his crazy, most memorable moments. But for me, Scott Steiner, 
he never he never really got better <laughs> in the ring ever. No, it's only from Scott when he took a dip, like once he started getting bigger, and you know there was a some of the moves that he did. We, you know, he weren't attempting Frankenstein's when he was that big in the late nineties. There was not; it weren't happening. No, I mean he never got better. He never improved, and he and he he always seemed like he always seemed like he he was he was never really comfortable. He always seemed a little bit nervous. He always seemed a little bit not really polished. You know, it was really weird with Scott Steiner because let's not like. You know, he still put on some decent matches as, you know, Big Papa Pump. You know, he had some... Oh, yeah. 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 Well, um, you know, he... he yeah. Underrated match with Goldberg in, like, 2000. Can't remember which where it was. It might have been, like, a full brawl or something. But they had a really good match, like, and one of the best Goldberg will ever have. But... Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, like I say, I, I like Scott Steiner just because the fact that he was loopy. Um, and you know he's crazy, and he is the winner of the Ico Pro Award. He always looked a million bucks, um, but he just he, he could always have been that little bit better in the ring, and it was just it was more disappointing than anything else, really, because you know he should have been bigger, you know, than he was. I mean, he got the push. He always got the put. I mean, he was the freakazoid. He had the freaks. Yeah. You know. They gave him the, the, the valets, you know, that he always had mic time. Uh, the, the problem with just... mic time was, though, he didn't always stick to what he was told. He liked to no. go off and he would bury people and start shooting like a nutcase, you know, on that's right, on DDP on Ric Flair. You know, he couldn't help himself. And that's why I think it was a bit disappointing because he, 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 ne- he was always. He was never happy, you know. He he always was trying to bury someone, or I was always trying to, you know, put put himself over in in weird ways. But like I say, let's not get over this match no. anyway. Like I say, let's not let it overshadow this match because let's at this point, back. let's get back in he that had the, Yeah, man, he had the sexy pink singlet. Yeah. He had he had the toned buttocks. He was Ico proed up, um, and he looked a million bucks in this match, and he worked his ass off. Let's yeah. be fair. Um, Sting hits a plancher to the outside, and like I said, I, at this point, I'm hooked. Like I'm, I'm dude. 100. Sting's into yeah. Sting's cross body over the top to the outside. I just looked. I rewound it. I rewound it, and just it. Wow. Just absolute. But they nearly missed it with the cameras again, dude. Yeah. But then Scotty tags him, and this is where the match takes a hell of a turn. Because he hits that double underhook tiger bomb on Sting. Yeah. The place is bouncing. You can see the cameras are sort of jutting up and down because the place is just going crazy. He hits a, a tilt a well slam as well. And this is where he climbs up on the middle rope and then just randomly as he gets down just shouts, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, so he's absolutely dog shit crazy, <laughs> man. He's I love it. Um there's a super belly to belly, like it's like it's so much going on in this. And uh, yeah, it's it is it is the it's a hell of a match. It is the match of the year, like for sure for me. Like in ninety one, what else have you got apart from maybe Savage Warrior? Which in its own way is fan fucking tastic. Um, Did, didn't we have no, it wasn't. I was thinking uh, Ravishing Rick Rude Warrior in the cage. Was that 90? 90, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the match is brilliant. There's a frenetic pace here. Like you can see, like they're starting to, you know, the obviously everyone's in fantastic tip top shape, but they're blowing pretty hard because they are just. This is, this is one of my favourite Sting matches, for, for sure. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, it go, it's going really well. And then. Oh, sorry. I missed a bit. Reverse tombstone spot. Oh, great. That was really good. I think it's uh, Scott picks Sting up for a tombstone. Sting reverses it. And again, the it, fans can really like bring a match to the top of the top of the pile. And they, they're so into everything that they're doing. And then the match takes its turn. And it gets, it, I mean, for you, it, it gets ruined. But it gets ruined. It get. I. I honestly believe that this. Yeah. This is why, it, it wasn't the best tag team match ever, because the finish. 
But yeah, sorry, Dave. I'm not saying it's the best tag team match ever. I'm saying the best one in WCW or NWA. Oh, if, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think the, 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 the finish ruined that, yeah. But I understand why they finished it this way. The ref is outside dealing with Luger and Rick Steiner. Nikita Koloff comes down to attack Luger. But Sting, being the good friend that he is, moves, shoves Luger out of the way and gets hit with the Russian sickle with a chain. Yeah. And Sting does the job. Uh, Scott Steiner pins him. Um, i got to be honest, I don't think anyone would have wanted to lose clean. They weren't going to carry on feuding at this point. Luger was going to go into a program with Ric Flair, or supposed to go into a program with Ric Flair at this point, like straight after this. Sting was going to do his own thing, and the Steiners would go on to face other tag teams. So a clean finish probably wasn't in anyone's interest. There, there was a there was kind of like the your curtain call moment at the end of this as well. Uh, yeah, very good. Um, it, not so much curtain call, but they do uh, they all do sort of embrace at the end of this match or the end of the thing. It's a very uh, very touching. It is. It is very touching. It, um, you know, moment, and it's uh, yeah. So Koloff comes down. Um, you know, at, after Luger. And um, I think after this match, you, you get well, Sting Giovanni yeah. talking to, to Koloff and he's, you know, spitting some venom and then Sting comes flying in like a fucking bat it's out good. of hell. Really good. And they, they have a brawl backstage. They, have a, they end up outside in the car park or whatever and eventually get broken up, doesn't it? Yeah. And then, it's good stuff, man. It's good. Yeah. Uh, can't can't uh yeah talk about that one enough that one's excellent and there's no way that it wasn't going to get topped on this show which you know is for, for some of the show yeah absolutely not but some of the show probably could have gone better but yeah it, brilliant match i can see why it was a match of the year in 91 for sure no it was good man it was good it, it had it had it had you on the edge of your seat man and uh, the, you know there was a few cuts to the crowd there was a, 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 some, a pair of twins in sting t-shirts just screaming their heads off yeah. great stuff um, next up is our TV title match uh, Bobby and beautiful Bobby against Arn Anderson who is our champion um, this isn't a UK exclusive it is just Arn in his beautiful red in pretty good shape for something that I got in 1991 or two. Uh, God, how long ago was that? Nearly 30 years. Yeah, wow. dude. Yeah, 20. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and also, if we're, if we're talking about theme tunes, we cannot brush over beautiful Bobby's theme tune. Yeah. But I, right. have, I have a problem, though. Why did Google okay. not do a beautiful Bobby Eaton figure? I, I don't know, dude. Um, um, didn't they, didn't they do a, um, a, a, a Lord Robert Eaton one? I don't, with, think, with, I don't think Galoo got hold of it, but a Galoo Bobby Eaton would have matched this, would have been perfect for this collection. Uh, did, did, was there never a Bobby Eaton WCW figure? One with um, uh, Stephen Regal? Was oh, there not a tag team pack? I'm not sure. I think there was a Playmates one. Okay, I, yeah. I, we, yeah we, Ducking past. I think later on there was, but yeah, there should have been a beautiful Bobby. Um, but his theme tune, just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, um, really good. Um, yeah, and it's Bobby and <laughs> Dude, it was too good. I mean, it's no bad. Yeah, it was it was so eighties. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's... It it was just phenomenal. But when that was banging, the crowd was popping. Um, he was over. You know, he was um, he was over. They were loving it, man. And it, this was actually a really enjoyable match for me. Well, really yeah. Liked it. Double A sells Eaton's punch. It was a punch. He sells it so well that it makes a lot of what went on in the other matches like really bad because Arn is selling it he's on the floor he's shaking his jaw he's trying to wake himself up it's like 
it was one punch man like it, absolutely fantastic I, well Arn's one of the greats dude as well yeah, yeah. Arn Anderson is 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 for me way up there man as a worker um knew when to you know and I will always love his bump when he when he comes off the top and then someone punches him in the belly and he does the flip <laughs> Yeah. I just I fucking love it, man. Every time. And again, shout out to Max, not the Hulk Hogan. Uh, he's another Double A fan, and he, he, you know, he's hit me with many a spine buster, and he modelled his spine buster on the Double A spine buster. Uh, great stuff. Shout out, Maxi. Hope you like your t-shirt, bruv. Yes, he did look good in that t-shirt. He saw the picture. He's rocking that purple. That's right. Beautiful purple. Um, Really nice clothesline as well from Bobby, and um, he hits himself on the post. Uh, I think he, and then yeah, Arn works the knee and slows the match down. Which I'm not, I'm not, you know, after the pace of what we've just seen in that tag team match, it sort of a bit of a come down. But then he hits the spine buster. Yeah, and that is and it's uh, the way it's the way he pulls it out of nowhere as a comeback. Yeah, is why I I love it and it, why it's a great move for Double A because it fits the whole. And this is a thing that wrestlers don't do too much nowadays, dude. They don't they don't think about their move set in conjunction to their character. Um, sometimes it's way off. You know, it, it, it's not the psychology and the moves should really go together. You you're know what I mean? You're telling me that a couple of little fellas hitting super kicks every five minutes doesn't work for you. No, it doesn't sometimes. You know uh, you know who I prefer over the bucks, though? The Motor well, City everyone. Machine Guns. Every no, the Motor City Machine Guns. You know, I love they, the Motor they, City they, Machine Guns. They made their return to Impact Wrestling, didn't they? Um, yeah. Slammiversary. So I'm sure you were thrilled when you and the other eight people watched it. Um, <laughs> Bro, let's not go down this road. We're friends, man. I've got to keep <laughs> getting them can, checks from, make, from Dixie. If I make my TNA jokes, I will make them. <laughs> Dixie might get upset and stop sending the checks, man. Stop. <laughs> I didn't know she was sending any. <laughs> I've um, got to keep pushing. Barry Windham. Um, Barry Windham comes down. It gets stopped by Pillman. And it'll just, yeah, if, Bobby hits the Alabama Jam. Great, one of the greatest leg drops from the top rope ever. Apart from maybe psychosis. Um, yeah, excellent. And the production team missed the three count. Yeah, they did miss the three count. Luckily, they showed it yeah, um, finally figured out on, on the replay. But yeah, it fucking annoyed me. I actually was like, I actually said, for fuck's sake, when I was watching it, <laughs> because how are you going to miss a three count after an Alabama jam, an Alabama jam and a new champion? You know, fuck's sake, get the three count in, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, yeah, production misses three count. The place does go crazy for, and Bobby jumps up and down with the referee. That was quite good. I thought that it's was great, good. man. The elation yeah. on the face of the yeah, new champion was yeah. absolutely brilliant. Selling that he's won the television title, like it means something. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I, again, I missed. I was annoyed with the three count being missed. They, luckily, they found someone that knew how to, you know, rewind and put a replay on, um, because they don't in every other show. Yeah. That World War Three nonsense. <laughs> oh, let's not. Man, yeah. Let's not. <laughs> but yeah, Bobby is our new television champion. Um, Tony Schiavone is backstage with uh, Mr. Matsuda, as we like to call him. And uh, Mr. Matsu says they're going to take that belt back to Japan, um, which is the WC. That was all he said. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally all he said. All we're to here do. to, yeah, we're here to take this belt back to Japan. Um, yeah. So Flair dropped the NWA title to Fujinami in March, but kept the WCW belt because he went over the top rope, which was against WCW's rules. Take a breath, take a minute, have a cup of tea and think about that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is our main event. It's for the WCW and the NWA Championship. It's not correct. Dead, yeah, but it's Tatsumi Fujinami, who is our IWGP champion. Correct. And that's not on the line, though. No, that belt is not on the line. And he's taken on the world's greatest Ric Flair, who's not wearing peach, much to Chris's annoyance. 
But I'm happy anyway, man, because today my missus bought me the Defining Moments Ric Flair. Defining Moments Ric Flair. And it only cost 10 English UK pounds. <laughs> um, Flair would have his hair cut as well, and I didn't like it. Yeah. It's not Ric Flair. I noticed that as well. It, he looked very strange with this particular hairdo. But this was this was the point where Jim Hurd wanted to call him Spartacus and Peggy come down to the Ring of a Shield and all that nonsense. So... Um, Jim Hurd, the man who run WCW, oh, good Lord. Um, well, more on Jim Hurd in a bit, but let's get to the match. Um, so you've got, with the intros, when they're walking down, you've got, like, Ric Flair put, taking his Rolex off and putting it on, like, a tray. He's got all his, like, <laughs> his house help. He's got, like, his butler, his cleaner, his chef, and, like, they're all there, like, either side. <laughs> Yeah, he's like the chef in a fucking chef hat. And he's got like the, your little silver plate and he takes his Rolex off and puts it on there, which is completely contrast to um, Tatsumi Fujinami's entrance. It's just literally like falls wait. into the ring. Um, this would be Flair's last WCW pay-per-view appearance. Um, more on that after this match for sure. Like, Because there is a little bit to talk about afterwards. <clears throat> really good Matt wrestling. Loved it. It was, it was good stuff, man. Good stuff. And something that, I don't know, something more akin to a Japanese match, I guess, is that Rick's not playing heel or a face here at the moment. They're both black trunks, black boots. You know, it is very Japanese, yeah. you know, in, its, in, in the way the match is, is, is going, you know. Mm. It was, and dude, the chops, were, they were lighting each other up with the chops. That's, yeah, very stiff one. Something I noticed as well, psychology was a little bit off. It was off. Yeah. It was off. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, sorry, just, just to mention as well, there were two referees. Yes. Which would, which would later figure in the match, which I thought was a bit weird. And I don't think they, they sold it enough in the way that it worked the, out. The, but the it, in the ring, was that Hattori? It was Tiger Hattori, yeah, yeah, and you had Bill Alfonso yeah, without the fucking good. whistle. Good old, but yeah, a, you know, a whistle would have made this a hell of a match. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Bill, yeah, Bill is at ring is at ringside as the second referee, just in case. Who knows? Um, yeah. Rick crutches Fujinami on the barricade, and that's very not Japanese. <laughs> like, yeah, not something you see every day <clears throat> in. Uh, in, in New Japan, going to say NJPW, New Japan. Let's, let's stick it with that. New uh, Japan, yeah. I mean, fucking Fujinami's <laughs> tough as boots, man. Yes. Uh, he's tough as boots, man. Uh, Rick works the leg, puts on the figure four, but the crowd's pretty dead to this. And it's a shame because it is a massive match. Like, there's a few signs in the crowd with some, you know, Japanese writing. There's, you know, Fujinami's got a little following here in Florida, of all places. Yeah. Um, yeah, the crowd's pretty dead for it. Flair blades. Um, of course he but, does. Well, <laughs> again, I've got no problem with the main event of blading. Like, I'm, blading's gone now, thank God. But if you're going to bleed, you're going to do it in the main event. You're not going to do it in match one or two or whatever. Like, You're going to make it count. You're going to make it mean something. Yeah, it doesn't mean as much if everybody does it. And it's the same thing with, you know, chair shots and cage matches and all that stuff. But yeah, he botches his corner flip and uh, Oklahoma roll sort of it just something just was off, their timing was off. And uh, he had to he had to put this bit was very strange for me. He had to get Fujinami into position whilst he was Flair was on the top rope for his own bump. I don't know if you know. Yeah. He was trying to get yeah, you know, to grab hold of him and chuck him off the top rope for that flare flip bump. Yeah, it, it's um, it's weird. Did you hear um the American Dream say something about butt kiss or neck kiss or something? He says, no. "I can't. Really, I've got it on my notes. It just says dream butt cuss neck cuss or something like that." The way he says something really strangely, it's like a dreamism again. But um, yeah, I mean they they when flare blade. Dude, he's piss. He's pissing blood. Yes. He's absolutely mm. like he's pissing overdone. blood, man. He's really overdone it because um, 
if Fujinami's got him in um, an octopus kind of hold, yeah. Um, and you can literally just see the blood because yeah. um, flares upside down, uh, and his head is is literally on the mat, and you can just see it. It's, it's absolutely pissing out of his, uh, pissing out of his head. Really, really, he's bleeding. And there's a couple of points where you see um, that he, he's really bleeding badly. He really is leaking. I mean, this isn't this isn't Guerrero 2004 bad, but it's it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, that was rough, man. Against that's, JBL, right? Yeah, that's that's the rough one. Fuck. Yeah. Um, well, any time. Backlash. Was um, it backlash? Oh, I can't remember. It might have been Judgment Day or something silly like that. But oh, Judgment Day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Or it was either No Way Out or Judgment Day. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was a uh, that was the, the blade job to end all blade jobs. I think. Um, the oh, crowd dude, finally waited because the, chi- the the chops are getting stiffer. Yeah. Jesus, man! Like some of these chops going in are tough. Well, and I mean, you you see Fujinami's chest at the end of the match purple. is absolutely yeah, yeah, fucked. And for anyone who has taken a chop, you know, I I love you for it because we've taken chops and they're not fun. No, they're not fun. They might look fun and they might sound cool, but they will take the wind out of you and they hurt. And I mean, there, there might be people thinking, oh, what do they know about wrestling? You know, what do they know? What are they talking about? We've tried it. We, we tried it. We didn't get very far, but we, we took the moves. So, you know, and there is, there is footage out there of us doing stuff. So if we find it, we'll post it. If we find it, we'll post it. And I think I have some stuff that was sent to me and didn't you say you found a DVD that just said wrestling DVD training DVD on it? Wrestling training. I haven't looked at it yet. You haven't looked <laughs> at it yet? No, because yeah. chances are that's going to be us, man. Could well be. Um, Shit. The, the, the magical garage that has produced so much wrestling stuff over the past couple of months produced a DVD that said wrestling training on it. And I, I'm not sure if I want to look into that, that box. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the chops are getting more stiff. There's another ref bump. Hitori gets wiped out. And Flair just grabs the trunks, rolls Fujinami up. Bill Alfonso gets in the ring, counts to three. A quick three. A really quick We're three. Done. Yeah. We're done. And that's, that's the end of the match, and it's Flair wins. So long, folks. Roll credits. But there's a little bit more to add to this one. Because despite being the champion and top heel, Jim Hurd, in his wisdom, wanted to cut Ric Flair's pay in half. And Rick obviously said, not a fucking chance, pal. I'm Ric Flair, you're Jim Hurd. He's too used, yeah, that's right. He's too used to the suits, the, the Rolexes, the limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, isn't he? Yeah. So. They, were rolling, they were rolling towards Great American Bash 91 with Ric Flair going in to take on Lex Luger, who was the number one contender, US champion, all of that stuff. And the plan, a real, apparently the plan was always for Flair to lose there anywhere. Luger to finally get his big win over Ric Flair. He'd always lost the big one, never won the big title matches, you know, and all that stuff. Two weeks before, Jim Hurd demands that Flair drops the belt to Barry Windham. Um, on a house show. I, t- I can't understand the reasoning. Just get to the fucking pay-per-view. Like, let, you know, let your story play out. Like, if you want to get rid of him after that, do it then. But Heard demands that he drops the belt. Fred says, no. <laughs> um, so Jim Heard fires him without getting the belt back. Yeah. And anyone who knows the history, you know, it's not something that we need to go over, but if we want to, we can. He doesn't take the title off him. He puts Barry Windham in the main event with Lex Luger at Great America Bash 91. You only have to watch that main event to understand how much fans fucking hated it. Mm -hmm. They crapped all over it. And Rick, in his infinite wisdom, calls Uncle Vince and... For a WCW show, we're ending it with Uncle Vince. And I apologise to WCW fans for this, but... Well, it's a yeah. bit of the history that goes with it, man. Yeah, you know? Flair, says, Flair says to him, I'm ready, and I've got the belt. 
Flint and sends it to Vince. Well, come on over, pal. And yeah, and Bobby Heenan. And I'm so glad I get to reference Bobby Heenan because we always love it. Bobby Heenan turns up on WWF television with the big gold belt and starts waxing lyrical about how great this title is and how the it real world champion to the real world's champion. That's right, Ric Flair. And it's true, Flair never dropped it in the ring. He never, never lost it. He was still, you know, he was still the champion. But many people still saw him as a champion at the time. And true, man, he was. I, th- I think Flair, in those, in that year and a bit that he spent in WWF, got so much out of it. Became it was great. A bigger star as well. Yeah, I mean, we 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 um we covered it in one of our recent uh, podcasts. We covered some of the great promos. That, that Ric Flair did, um, you know, some of the some of the stuff that he did was absolutely fantastic in that era of, of WWF. You know, the promos he did with um, Mr. Perfect. Yeah. You know, um, the, the whole Rumble, the one the one after Royal Rumble 1992. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. um, Survivor Series, wasn't it? Survivor Series. Yeah. 91, yeah. The, 91 that we did. You know, you had the triangle. You had the the the, the triangle of love. You had Ric Flair, you had Mr. Perfect, and you had Bobby the Brain Heenan. The Nature Boy as well. Sorry, I, I didn't bring him out he, earlier, but here he is in all his glory in deep, deep red. He comes I've got the blue, I've got, I've got the blue got, trunks, yeah, man. He comes in many forms, Ric Flair. He gets Yeah, I've got the blue trunk galoobs. Sting gets like so many figures out of galoob. It's unreal. So many different colours and outfits. But yeah, that's and that's a that's only part of my Galoob collection um, in the uh, memorabilia mayhem show. So there's plenty more to come. But yeah, Ric Flair obviously was really really hating how how he had to work under Jim Hurd and that sort of WCW hierarchy, and made probably the best decision for him by going to the World Wrestling Federation and. Being the big man there, he got he got to showcase his skills. He got sixty minutes in a Royal Rumble. He got he got everything, didn't he? It was it was great, and it was yeah. probably one of probably one of the best short runs in the WWF ever. He was white hot, dude. We said it before. He was absolutely he was, white hot. He was smoking from the minute he walked in, and yeah, that's our show. That's it. That's Super Brawl '91. It. It ends on a. It ends. We were talking about the WWF because a lot of this roster, a lot of this, you know, a lot of these guys would end up in the WWF by 1993. So yeah, I mean, Steiners would be gone. Luger would be gone. Uh, Stud Scott Hall would be gone. Oz. Oz. <laughs> I mean, that's a massive. Well, yeah. Welcome to Oz. Welcome to Oz. Welcome to Oz. You know, Ron Simmons wouldn't be gone he would wait a little bit longer but yeah it's i suppose it's probably wcw's last stand at this with rick flair for, for now because he didn't come back till mid 93. They, they were having big time problems dude they were having big time problems at this time money wise um creative wise um you know they 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 bought they bought eric bischoff in to try and balance the books i think well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if Bischoff is the next boss. I think Bill Watts is in next. Yeah, Bill Watts is in there. And oh. then, uh, you know, they they um, they um bought in Bischoff to try and balance the books and not spend so much money. And he actually ended Bill, up spending more Bill money. Bill balanced the books, yeah, quite well. He had to, he knew what he had to do, like, in regards to, you know, cutting a lot of production and stuff like that and even cutting wrestlers' pay, which, you know, isn't great on the in the grand scheme of it, but he had a job to do. So we completely understand that. And then, yeah, then Bischoff got the job because I think, uh, Watts got the sack or got fired. And He was rubbing people up the wrong way, though, weren't he, Bill Watts? Yeah, there was, a, there was an interview that he did. Um, they claimed he was racist, but he was the guy that made Ron Simmons world champion. So I'm, I don't believe it for a second. Okay. And, uh, he, yeah, he would also turn up to the offices at 
Turner Tower in like you know his trainers and his jeans, which wasn't acceptable. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I kind of like it. I kind of. Oh, yeah, I, like I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, just imagine walking into Ted's office and putting him in a headlock. <laughs> Said, "What's up, Ted?" Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Um, we are we are in the process of getting another couple of shows out as a bit quicker than normal. Uh, we felt like we lost a bit of steam with the uh, with Virgin Media screwing us around. Uh, yeah. So next up, what have we got, Chris? Next up, we have got one heck of a show, dude. The, the, the next, so as, as people know, we rotate. So now was WCW Super Brawl 1, Return from the Rising Sun, 1991. And we are going to that company up north again, WWF. And this time... It is one heck of a fucking show, dude. It mm. is Backlash 1999. Fantastic. It is, it is a, it's a, the other end of that 90s decade. Things are a little bit different in the, uh, in the wrestling world by then. But yeah, it's a, yeah, another great show and we can't wait to get it out there. We will be out a lot sooner than normal with this, with this show. We are, we're playing catch up a little bit, but not that much really. You know. No, not that much. I mean, to be honest, we we the last three, um, so uh, the, our last uh, podcast that we did was Royal Rumble nineteen ninety eight. Oh yeah, good one. Uh, so we did that. So um, we we picked those three. So we had Royal Rumble nineteen ninety eight. We had WCW Super Brawl, and we had WWF Backlash ninety nine. We'd already had those three picked out, so it's rare that we actually do that. But we had three already penciled in that we knew what we were going to do. And this is one heck of a pay per view. And the main event is Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. Oh, straight fire! I cannot wait to get you know. And it's with with special referee Shane McMahon. So if you remember that one. It just gets bigger and bigger. It's great. It's a great pay-per-view. Great main event. So that is our next one that we're doing next. But yeah, we are here and it was Super Brawl 91, WCW. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's remind everyone that you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on Instagram and Twitter. It is Chat Grapple at Chat Grapple Pops on those ones. We are on Facebook. There is a Facebook group. Um, we are also, you can also check us on YouTube and check into all our previous episodes. By all means, have a look at them. See if, you know, if, if you think we're funny, if you don't, fine. Hit that subscribe button. It's there somewhere. Hit the like. It's the, please do. Please do. It's, it's, down, it's down there. <laughs> Just hit the bell. Fucking do it. If you're watching this, hit the bell. You don't have to do anything else. We don't want no money. And if anything, if you subscribe, you will be on the list of subscribers where you could win a whole plethora of goodies. And once you're a subscriber, you're on that subscriber list. We will be picking winners randomly all the time. Oh, and you'll be winning shit, man. You'll be, let's have a look what kind of stuff. I mean, even here, I've just got a little, you know, what have we got here? I've got For All Mankind, okay? The Mick Foley Triple DVD. You could win that. You could win the Hall of Fame 2004 induction. Possibly the best the group best of ones, inductees yeah. ever. And it's got Bobby the Brain Heenan's induction on there as well. Great group of people you've got on this one. Absolutely fantastic. Don Morocco, you know, superstar Billy Graham, Jesse Ventura, JYD, fucking so many. So that's in the thing. Shawn Michaels, you know, Heartbreak and Triumph. Oh, Heartbreak and Triumph. Triple DVD. You know what I mean? Rise and Fall of ECW. Now, that is a prize and a half. That is an excellent documentary slash DVD. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. Yeah, like every... That is on the list. You could win it. Yeah, Shawn Michaels from The Vault. It's another good one, yeah. Another one. And it comes with your 3D <laughs> card in it. Double DVD. Come on, guys. Subscribe. And if that's not enough for you, we'll finish on WCW, the very best of Nitro. That can, yeah, that, that's a good one. Night, night Triple trip. DVD! You've got eight hours and 45 minutes of footage on this, guys. This is nine hours of WCW Nitro. That is just a little bit of what you can win. So please, guys, 
we've really enjoyed doing this and we ain't going to stop. Um, but if we can get that subscriber count up, we will start chucking these things out. We will start doing these giveaways. We will start sending them out. We've got a lot of love to give. We've got a, hell of, a whole lot of love, baby. You know, and we might not be as pretty as uh, Johnny B. Bad, but we've got a lot of love to give, man. You know what I mean? And that's, that's exactly it. You know, we are, we are just two guys that have a lot of fun chatting about this stuff. And for those of you who are still awake, still listening, still watching, we thank you for staying with us and thank you for continuing to watch, keeping our numbers up, listening, watching, laughing, crying probably, because, you know, let's face it, we talked about Oz. Um, <laughs> you know, we thank you and we don't, we don't ask for much. We just want you to hit that subscribe button. Just click it, baby. Come on. Come on. Just click it. Do it now. <laughs> Good now. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks for all of our lovely subscribers that we already have. We are very, very grateful. Um, and we're going to keep pumping out the episodes. This was WCW Super Bowl 1. Next episode is going to be WWF Backlash 99. I am Chris Dredd, my main man, JB. And this is Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops Podcast. That's and it, that's folks. about it, ain't it, Jay? Well, folks. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>